Fields. It is Ashley Fields with Yard Art R Us. Today we are going to be doing our wise men. Uh, this is wise men number two blank. Um, he is the second of the three wise men that we will get done. And then um, I'll be back on later this afternoon to do the third wise men. We did one yesterday and we're going to do two today. So I did base coat this last week. So I'm just going to get some Windex on here. Um, the reason I always Windex is because for me, we use exterior house paint and um, I find that if I have had anything sitting around, sometimes even if it's been sitting around for a couple hours and I go to paint it, uh, my paint usually separates. So the Windex just prevents me from having to deal with that separation. Hey Debbie, how are you? Hi Mandy. Good morning friends. All right, y'all, let's go over colors right quick. So this guy, I have one coat of white as my base. Uh, this lighter blue right here is what we call medium blue. This darker blue we refer to as brilliant blue. You have light yellow on the crown uh, up here and on his belt. This purple right here, I actually mixed together light purple and shading purple to create kind of a middle purple type tone. And then um, up here on the headdress, this is actually Christmas green and dark green mixed together. Again, kind of a middle tone on there. I have my flesh tone on the face and the hands, the beard and the mustache, and the shoes are done in reindeer brown. And then on, uh, I'm not even sure what to call this, on this thing that he's carrying, this is gold. That's deco art gold. Let me show you that up close. And all I did when I painted this is I just blotted uh, to kind of get that look on there. Because we've talked about metallics and how hard it is to paint with metallics because you always see the streaks and that just doesn't look good. So hi Paula, hi Janeth, how are y'all doing this morning? All right y'all, let me get my stuff pulled over. I didn't realize I kind of got it far back over here. And um, we're just gonna hop on in. Let's see, okay. I am going to get started with my, I'm going to get started with my face. I got a number 10. This is a uh, royal flat tip brush. I refer to them as a shader. Hey Tanya, how are you dear? All right y'all, so on that flesh tone, I always pair that with uh, this color. It, it, these are all colors in our paint palette that we carry at Yard Art R Us. And so this color is called, we call it shading flesh. So it's just a darker peach kind of tone, like a, a peachish reddish kind of tone almost. So I'm just dipping just that corner of my brush. Let me turn it so you guys can see it a little bit better. Just that tip on there. Because I have such small areas to work with, you don't want to kind of come in here with too much paint. It's very, very easy to um, overdo it. So at this moment, I kind of just set that brush in here and follow these lines that are already etched on there for me by uh, that CNC. And then up here on the face, again, just kind of following those lines. Now when it comes to the face, y'all, we've got a pretty small face. Like this is a little smaller than maybe the palm of my hand. Uh, so I don't try to get too overboard with it. I just kind of going around that outside. Now what I will do is just take that paint that's already in my brush and just kind of really get it brought into those bristles a little bit better. When I'm doing the rosy cheeks, you don't want to have a whole lot of paint on your brush because it can kind of get overwhelming. So I just almost mix them in and just take that brush and kind of give it a few swirls for that rosy cheek kind of look. And y'all, this piece is so big. It's really hard. Uh, these pieces are about 44 inches tall. So it's kind of hard for you guys to have a great angle on the whole thing. Uh, so my apologies. I'm trying to do the best I can angle wise. Now I will just also take what's left in this brush and just kind of add maybe a couple of swish marks here and there. Nothing too crazy. We're going to leave it just like that. The hand is so small. I don't want to add swish marks with this peach. 
what I will do is when we highlight, I'll add some highlights on there. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Thank you, Debbie. Debbie's sharing the template uh, link for you guys. This guy we have is a blank. I believe he's $47. And then we also have templates available for the entire nativity set, which I think the entire set's like 14 pieces maybe. It's a lot. So we actually sell them all separately. That way anybody who only wants to do maybe Mary, Joseph, and the baby and one shepherd or something like that, you know, you can do that. You don't have to get everything all together. All right, y'all, on this gold, I actually took that same gold color. It's Deco Art Gold, and I just added a couple of drops of nutmeg to it. So I basically made almost a bronze kind of color. And that's what I'm using to shade because when it comes to, like, trying to shade a metallic, it's hard to have a color for that. So I just really mixed it. I used that same gold and just mixed it with a, a nutmeg, which is uh, kind of a darker brown but it's got a good brown tone. It's not like a red brown, it's a good brown. So just kind of do a little light shading on there. And then I will come up in here, I'm just gonna get a touch more paint on here and just go bloop, bloop, and leave it be. That, uh, this one, this gold nutmeg mixture is such a beautiful complement to, um, to that gold. So wash that brush out. Now we'll move on to that uh, reindeer brown color. So when it comes to reindeer brown, I like to use shading brown as my complement. So basically all these colors, whenever I'm doing a shading, I'm kind of just coming in with a shade darker. Uh, that's how I choose what I, where I'm gonna pair up these colors. Just a shade darker in that same color family. So again, I'm still using that same number 10 royal brush. Hello, mother. Paula says, uh, great idea on the shading gold. Yes, girl, take a little nutmeg. And y'all, I, I can be honest and say I didn't even try that with adding black. I just think that black is in such a different color family than that gold that if you really are wanting to darken it, use a brown. I think the black would just make it a little too icky, in my opinion. I'm just gonna kinda come in here and create just a couple of lines right there. And now let me move this up so you guys can see his shoes. Again, just keeping this nice and simple. And I want to even say this bottom line down here, I'm just going to come in and fill that in with black. Really, I should have base coated it black, but since I'm going to add that black at the end, little spots like that, I don't even worry about trying to base coat them. I know I'll get to it whenever I outline, so no biggie. Hi, Tanya. Hey, Kathy. Good morning. Kathy, I'm working on cutting out some more of uh, all of the wise men and shepherds, and I plan on having them at the store tomorrow morning. Just FYI, I will uh, make a post. Um, as soon as I get off this, this live, I am going to go do some cutting, and then I'll be back on this afternoon um, with the third wise men, and I should be able to have an update for you then whether I have it all cut and in the system and ready to go. Hi, Lupe, how are you? Lupe says, Ashley, have you done the tutorial on the lambs? Lupe, those t lamb tutorials were done in Yard Art Academy, I do believe. They were done with Victoria and Mary. They kind of joined up together on that tutorial. I'm not sure if you're a member of the Academy, um, but they can be found there. Thank you, Mary. Mary's helping to answer those questions. All right, y'all. I'm moving on to shading yellow. Still using the same exact brush. All I'm really doing is just washing it out in between every time. And when I'm shading, I basically just kind of butt up my lines to the existing lines that are already there for me. I'm not really doing anything all that crazy. Y'all, I'm really gonna, I'm hoping that my uh, Wi-Fi is gonna hold out on me on this video, because right before I went live, our um, electricity was going in and out. I don't know why, but it was. So if y'all see me disappear, just know I'll be back soon. <laughs> Hi, Rondell, how are you? All right, we have this, uh, his crown up here. Y'all, I did this crown in light yellow, but honestly, you could do it in gold. It would look really, really good in gold. Uh, in fact, I kind of wishing now that I did do it in gold, but that's okay. 
we can uh, make it work. I think I've been just kind of almost obsessed with doing the gold. I'm, I'm, now that I've kind of learned how to make metallics work for me, which is basically just doing a blotting type technique, now it's exciting getting to paint with metallics. All right, we got that shading yellow on our yellow. Hi, Wendy. How are you, dear? I'm done with that shading yellow, and we're just basically going to keep on moving through these colors. So we still need to shade our medium blue, our brilliant blue, and this green. By the way, those of you that are just hopping on, this green right here, this dark green, it's actually a mixture of Christmas green and dark green. I kind of wanted something that was in between. Now, I actually think I'm going to put that brush up. I'm going to get one a little bit bigger, and I'm seeing that I've dripped water all over the sky. Whoopsie. I'm going to get a number 12. Uh, here we go. Got some right here. Let me get a number 12. The only reason I want one a little bit bigger, how do I keep dripping water? Where is this water? Oh, it must be on my table. Hello. Uh, the reason I'm just getting a number 12 is I have some bigger uh, space to kind of, Cover now. I have a larger area. So, all right. This medium blue, we are going to shade with brilliant blue, which is the same blue. So, I'm basically shading this lighter blue with this darker blue. And then when I go to shade this darker blue, I'll use a navy. So, again, number 12. These are still those royal paint brushes. And I kind of just loaded in that corner. And from there, I'd almost just kind of set it down and start pulling it through, following these lines. Go back, load more, and keep on following these lines. Bring this up. Now here, I do almost feel like bring that in a little. It's kind of like his arm, other arm that's hiding. And then I'm gonna just come on down here. Follow, I'm gonna move it up a little bit. The bigger the piece, y'all, the harder it is to get it all in camera frame. So y'all bear with me if you can't see stuff too well. Hey Carla, how are you, my dear? Rondell says, I'm doing well, thank you. I just happened to stumble upon your page two days ago and I find it so fascinating to watch. Oh, well, thank you, my dear. I'm so glad that you're here and hanging out. And I hope that um, you get started on painting soon, if you haven't already. I love hearing the success stories of everyone um, kind of getting outside of their box and starting to paint new stuff. So fun to see that. Alrighty, now down here, I'm gonna, I know I don't have much paint in my brush, so I'm just going to load and just offload just to make sure that I can get some, some nice swish marks. I almost just kind of envision this fabric kind of flowing downward. So I like to do some, I don't really just want just straight marks here. There we go. Hi Kelly, hey Amy. All right, y'all, just got done with that brilliant blue on that, that medium blue base. I used brilliant blue shading. And now I'm going to switch, and on my brilliant blue base here, I'm going to use navy shading. Basically, I'm always trying to go a shade darker. The only time that that would really differ is sometimes if I already have a really dark shade, I might do a shade lighter. Uh, but I kind of typically always go a little darker. I'm not even going to wash out my brush. I'm not going to worry about it. Add that baby in there. And again, you just kind of start out by just following those perimeter lines. I'm just going to match them up. Have them come and touch each other. There we go. All right. Got all those perimeter lines done, and just as I did down here, you're kind of picturing your fabric flowing downward. I'm almost going to start at the bottom. Come up here. Now, 
whenever I uh, come back in here with outline and highlights, I'll add some black and some white in here. And so if you feel like there's any open spots, we'll end up getting them filled in uh, with a little bit more color. Hey, Gail. Hey, Samantha. All right, we got our blues done. We got our browns done. Only thing we've got left to do is just our purple and our green. So on both of these colors, both the purple and the green, they were hand mixed by me. I basically took our light purple shading purple to mix this kind of in the middle tone. And then this green is a mixture of Christmas and dark green to give me, again, just a kind of middle, middle of the road kind of color coming there. All right, so I'm gonna grab my dark purple. Still using that same exact brush. I don't really even see the point in trying to use a ton of different brushes. I can use these same ones and then just not have to wash so many. I'm just going to take my brush and just kind of... Simple as that. All right, one more wash out. Clean that brush out. And let's get this... Uh, dark green color. So I'm going to pair this, this medium green, I'm kind of calling it, with a, my dark green shading. I think that's the reason I didn't use the dark green on here, is I wanted to be able to shade with the dark green. This doesn't even look like dark. Is that dark green? Yeah, it is. Okay, just checking. I'm sitting here double <laughs> uh, questioning myself grab some more. I need to just get a little bit more put in this cup because I can tell it's kind of watered down. I must have used it to outline. I think I did because I was working on some pumpkins. Alrighty, got that darker green shade. Same exact thing. I'm dipping that corner of my shader and start by just following those perimeter lines on that color. I like how this shading is almost uh, subtle with this, the green that's underneath. It's not too, too bright. Now I am gonna take this kind of curve in here and just go, just bring it in just a touch. Now on here, I'm gonna end up doing some dots, some polka dots on here. So I'm not gonna add swish marks. I don't want to overdo it if I'm doing something like adding a pattern or a print to something you know I don't want to have too much going on underneath it's very easy to go overboard and so I kind of try to stick with that less is more mentality when it comes to yard art I just think it looks a little bit better that way more simplistic and I hit it with the blow dryer so we can get this outlined if you guys are painting at home I suggest you use sunlight and heat to uh, just dry your pieces as opposed to trying to dry with a blow dryer. Anytime I'm painting uh, and working on my own stuff or working on pieces to, that I sell to customers, I never blow dry. I simply allow them to just dry naturally. to where it won't be pulling up in my other colors, like pulling up in my black when I'm outlining. Perfect. 
Hey, Tanya, how are you? Hi, Katie, Tammy, great to see you guys. Let me pull up this photo right quick. I wanna double check also and see what colors I used on, um, on the polka dots. Y'all, I can't remember. Because I painted this like a month ago, my sample, and a month is a long time for me. <laughs> I can't recall what I did a month ago. Let's see. It looks like I used lime green and maybe white. I think that's white. I'm going to guesstimate. Something like that. Okay. We can do that. Lime green and white. Okay. I am going to grab, huh, let me see. I got some decent round tip brushes. Might need to grab a couple from over here. There we go. I'm gonna just pick kind of two different sizes. I liked, I love mixing and matching sizes. We're gonna add some polka dots on the headdress. And then we'll start outlining. Hi Carolyn, how are you my dear? Let me pull back up on my comments, get out of my photo. Let's see. There we go. All right, uh, Carolyn says, oh, I'm so glad I, I found your page. Got a jigsaw for my birthday and I'm ready to hit the road running and make stuff. Yes, girl, you go. Totally, We've, I'd love to see um, how your projects come out. You let us know, keep us posted. It's so fun getting to watch um, other creators be successful in their artistic journeys, especially, I have a, we've got a lot of people that have kind of made this into like their side hobby that brings in another income for them and their family, which is just amazing to see that. I love seeing that. Y'all, this is a round tip brush. Uh, it's a number eight round. I'm just using this for my polka dots. I'm kind of just doing them random. Almost just coming in, just setting it down. Y'all, this does not have to be perfect. This is yard art. It is meant to be seen from the road. Uh, so if my polka dots aren't perfect, it don't bother me. It really doesn't bother me. These are kind of thick. So this will be one of those things that'll need a little time to dry. That's going to be for sure. Just kind of taking that brush and almost just twisting it. I am going to come in with some uh, white polka dots as well. So that's why I'm not trying to get these two too close together. Leave some space. I don't want to wash this out yet, uh, just because in, in case if I feel like I need some more, I want to make sure I have that ready. Now, hmm, I might just use this script liner. The script liner is really old and fanned out, so it might make some really good circles for me. Carolyn says, I've done some round door hangers. I just started cutting some pumpkins and ghosts for Halloween door hangers but I really want to do big pieces like you guys do. Yes, girl, go for it. Honestly, the painting process and cutting process is everything's the same. It's, it's really more of a difference of material and a difference of paint. But other than that, you know, you just go for it. Now we do have a lot of people that I have talked about using craft paint on um, yard art. I don't have experience with that, so I can't tell you how that turns out but we do use exterior, like house paint. Like if you're going to Home Depot or Lowe's or wherever your hardware store is and buying paint to paint the outside of your house, that's the kind of paint we use. Nothing too special or crazy. See, this is why I didn't put up that brush because I almost feel like I need a green right here. And again, I'm just not trying to go too overboard on here. I kind of like the few and far between type of thing going. Oh, maybe I'll do one here. I think I'll leave it. Let it be. 
All right, let's hop on into outlining. Let me get all this put back up before I make a big mess. All right. I'm going to move this out of the way. We're going to start with our black. So let me see. I don't know. I keep having to switch between two script liners. One's been giving me really, really thick lines, and the other one can give me some thinner lines. So I'm, I'm trying to go for the one that gives me the thinner lines, but that might mean I have to switch here in a little bit. All right. So I'm using a royal gold uh, script liner. It's the number four. Anytime you guys see a script liner in my hand, it is literally always a royal gold. I think they have the best script liners out of all the brands that I've ever tried because, I, in my opinion, these break in the fastest. I've tried a lot of other brands and it feels like it takes me, you know, three weeks, maybe a month or maybe more to get my brush broken in. And that just drives me crazy. I don't have time for all that. I think, I'm, I'm, think what I'm really saying is I'm impatient. <laughs> and so um, I've really grown partial to these script liners, to this brand, because I just feel like they're, they're easy to work with. So basically I'm just taking the black and I'm outlining all of my lines that are etched from my CNC and just kind of creating your boundary in between every color. Again, I'm kind of wishing that I had done my crown in gold, which if I did do it in gold, I would not be outlining with black, I'd be outlining with nutmeg. get out of control. So when that happens and my line goes somewhere I really didn't want it to, I just simply take my hand and clean it up. All right, we're just going to follow along these lines. Kind of load that paintbrush and start bringing it around. This is that time when you if you have any imperfections that occurred while you were painting, start getting them covered up. The part about outlining and highlighting that I love is kind of covering any boo-boos. Y'all, what's everybody got going on this weekend? I know I was telling you guys yesterday that here in South, uh, South Texas, we've had like rain for what feels like months. It might, it might have been months, I don't know. It's been a lot. And so I was saying how we've gotten a reprieve from the high temperatures and that part's been nice. And then after my live yesterday, I go watch the news and it's talking about how we're gonna be up in the 90s with uh, like 97, 98 degree weather. I was like, uh-oh, did I just jinx all of us? <laughs> but I'm grateful to see that there is not a whole lot of rain left on that uh, seven day forecast coming up. Cause my lawn y'all is out of control. Every time my lawn guys are supposed to have been coming over, um, it's been raining and I mean raining, raining, not, not light rain to say the least. So, uh, hi Rita. Rita says, do you buy your colors or make your own? Rita, we, uh, we buy all of our colors uh, and we actually stock them and sell them. And so I, we sell all of our colors, all the colors that you see me using with the exception of the metallics. And so uh, 
the gold here, right here is the only color that is not ours. That's a deco art color. All the rest are ours. Now, some to a couple of these colors that I did use today, which is the purple that you see on here and the dark green on the headdress, those are colors that I mixed with other colors that are in our paint palette. But um, if you go on our website, which is yardartrus.com, um, we have multiple tabs there. One of those tabs says paint supplies, and you can see all of our paint colors um, online, as well as you can order them. So when people buy blanks from us, I know we've got a lot of new followers. If you buy blanks from us, both on our listing online, we tell you what colors we use. And then if those of you that are local, um, we have uh, tags on the back of every blank if you come up to the store that tells you what colors that we use and then those are the colors that you hear us talking about whenever we're doing this Debbie says I'm in charge of baseball this weekend with my grandson while Christy is out of state with softball well that's awesome you get to hang out with your grandson I know your grandbabies are always uh, running up and down the road with sports so I'm glad that you're getting to spend some time with them I don't know how you keep up with them we were never a sports family or anything growing up. Uh, but, you know, I've had friends that were, and they literally spend like their entire time, all the time on the road and at games. I don't really know what that's like. Y'all, basically right now, anywhere that I have these swish marks, I almost kind of set that brush down on top and just lightly kind of pull it through. Just creating a little dimension, if you will, or a little depth um, to all of those lines. I can see a little bit of white poking through right there from that etch line. Just touching that up. Now I'm going to pull this down just a wee bit. I need to finish out this headdress. And I need to add an eyeball while I have out my black. I will have to turn this around kind of sideways to do that. Anytime I'm working in this area that's really small, like I, I get really, really close so I can make it look good. Uh, Debbie says, had him all week and loving it. He's getting, uh, he's helping get my house in order. That's awesome, Debbie. What would we do without kids and grandkids? Y'all, no. my daughter is, um, She's 11. I know this is upside down. I'm sorry, but I kind of kind of paint it like this right quick. Um, and she is still, and I, I, I'm just crossing my fingers this last into teenage years, but she is still like such a sweetheart and um, loves doing things to help mommy and daddy. And, um, you know, like some days, She'll just clean the house and do the laundry, and we don't even ask her to. And she's like, well, I just thought that I could help you guys out. And I'm like, oh, my God, you're the sweetest. Uh, so I'm so thankful for her because I don't know how I'd keep up with this house without her. All right, kind of just filling in that eye. Now I'm going to take off any excess. We want some little eyelashes. We don't want – oh, child. That is a funky eyelash. Well, oh well. Some eyelashes look great, some not so great. I can't say I like those. <laughs> oh well. All right, y'all. I got all that black on here. Anything that doesn't have outline right now, which is going to be the gold, the flesh, and your brown tones, I like to use. Uh, we're going to use shading red on the flesh, or not the flesh, excuse me, on the brown tones. On the flesh, I'm actually not going to outline, but what I will do is use that same shading color to clean up any lines that might need a little bit of outline. And then right here on my gold part, I'm going to use nutmeg to outline. So the reason you guys kind of see me switching and not just doing all black is a lot of these other colors, I feel like they have better complements to them than black. Black can just be too harsh. So brown tones, I like to use shading red. Shading red is just a mixture of red and black. It's almost like a maroon color. Uh, and I think this maroon color is just a better complement on these lighter tones. So 
So basically, anywhere that I have that brown, outlining to create that boundary. And I am trying to keep my lines rather small, um, just because he's not a very big piece. His entire face is maybe the size of the palm of my hand. He's not, it's not very big. And then we're gonna leave that hand alone. I'll touch that up with a little shady flush. Let me move a few of these out of the way right quick because I do need to slide him up. Slide him up. And then we just got our brown on the shoes. I'll take a, um, pull my sleeve up so I don't get um, paint in my sleeve and then pull it all over. Just take a little bit on these shoes. All right, now shading, brown, shading red is done. Uh, we're gonna grab our nutmeg for the gold. Because remember, I used that nutmeg and gold mixture to do that shading. So now I'm just gonna use that nutmeg to outline. Again, I just think it's a better complementary color than a black would be. And just come in. Simply gonna follow the lines that are already etched. Nothing too crazy. pretty. All right, now we're going to grab that shading flesh and just clean up. Let me show you guys why. I know y'all are kind of far away. Let me show you what this hand looks like up close. If you look at that hand up close, you can see those lines don't look very pretty, right? So basically what I'm going to do, I'm trying to move it like this, maybe y'all can see it a little bit better. Bring it down. I'm just gonna use that same shading flesh that I used to shade, same exact color, but I'm gonna use it on a script liner just to clean up those lines. Those lines don't look so great. And the reason I'm not outlining the whole hand is really because there's not a whole lot of space here. It's a pretty small, um, I mean, let's see, it's about three fingers wide. So if I start trying to bring an outline color in there, it's gonna end up really dark and almost kind of like a big blob, which nobody wants. So I'm just using that script liner to just touch up little parts of it. I'm gonna do that same thing right here on the face, anywhere that I might see. Actually, I think the face looks okay. Yeah, I'm gonna leave the face alone. That's all I'm doing, just a little, little touch up on there. Okay, last but not least, we're gonna add some highlights just leave you guys down low if that's okay and I'll just move this uh, Wiseman around. Now I'm gonna go back to that white. Again, same script liner, same royal gold number four. I like to load that paint and y'all this is watered down. As I get it the consistency of about cream. I load it and then offload it. These are highlights, right? So they're wispy. You don't want thick paint. You want it to be light. even come and just boop. Now right there on the inside, I'll just bring in very light. You almost can't see it. On this eyeball, he needs a little white dot. However, it's really wet. Let's see. Boop. Okay. Hopefully it'll stay. Sometimes when I do that, when it's wet, after I get done with my live, it ends up turning into a huge blob. Get a little bit there. Come down here, scoot it around a little bit. Basically. 
basically over here on your blues, I kind of almost go in between where I'm, I already have some colors. I like to do a mixture of heights and lengths. So I don't start all from one area. I kind of come in and just random start and stop here and there where they almost kind of feed into each other. Move some of those, sorry y'all. Come in here like so, maybe there. Do the same thing right over here. I am gonna do the uh, the third Wiseman today. Yes, it'll be this afternoon. Uh, I'd say, I don't know, uh, I can't even, I don't even, what time is it? I would give y'all a guesstimate. <laughs> I don't even know what time it is. Uh, I have no idea. I'm gonna say maybe around four. It depends on when I can get, I'm getting that CNC cutting today, y'all, because we're out of Oh Holy Night Mangers. We're out of all the wives men and the shepherds. So uh, basically as soon as I get those things cut and uh, put back in the inventory system, then I plan on going live again. All right, oh, I need to come back up here to the face. Let me lift you guys back up a little bit. Again, very light, very wispy. I'm not bringing in a whole lot. Just a little here and there. Same thing. Offload. And maybe even. All right. I'm going to leave him. Let's see if I can lift y'all up a little bit more and see if you can get the full scope. There we go. I think that's a little better. All right, John. Here is your finished look. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I forgot the white wispies down here on the boots, on his shoes. I'm moving too fast. I thought I was almost done. Because y'all know we're never done until you add highlights. Never, ever, ever. Gotta have highlights. All right. As a quick recap on colors, I did one coat of white as my primer base. From there, I put, uh, we did flesh on our face and paired that with shading. Flesh is my shading color. We did reindeer brown on the mustache, beard, and shoes and paired reindeer brown base with a shading brown shading color. Um, right here on my headdress, we have, a, it is a mixture of Christmas green and dark green. And then we paired that with a shading of dark green. On the polka dots, it's just lime and white. And then on my crown, and uh, the bottom tips of the belt, that's light yellow paired with shading yellow. This purple is a mixture of our light purple and shading purple mixed together, and then I shaded with shading purple. On um, our little gold thing right here, this is your, uh, this is Deco Art. It is, they have an interior, exterior metallic gold. So that gold is my base. I shaded with a mixture of gold and nutmeg together, and then I outlined with nutmeg. And then uh, this blue is called medium blue. We shaded with brilliant blue. This blue is brilliant blue, which we shaded with navy. From there, we outlined in black everything with the exception of our brown tones, which we outlined with shading red. And then our gold tones, we outlined with nutmeg. And our flesh tones, we simply just paired that with shade and outline of shading flesh. Added a few highlights and bada bing, bada boom. This guy is done. We are out of stock in the store. I will have more back in the store tomorrow. So if you guys are waiting on the wise men or the shepherds, you can find them online and uh, back in our stock by tomorrow morning. And then I will see you guys later on this afternoon to do the third of the wise men. And then we'll have all of our wise men done. All right, everybody, thanks for hanging out. I will see you guys in a few hours. Bye guys.